Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to be going over numerical expression applications. Pause to check out the timestamps and feel free to jump around the video by using them in the description. Numerical expressions are just order of operations problems. A numerical expression could be something like 4 plus 5, 15 minus 10 divided by 2, 6 plus 7 times 4, or even just something like 8. You can also throw in exponents and parentheses, but these are all just numerical expressions. If you need to review what the order of operations are, please watch my previous video on it. This video is dedicated to taking some sort of word problem or scenario, simplifying it a bit into a verbal model, translating it into a numerical expression that we can solve, and then actually solving it. Let's do some math together. Here's example one. Pause the video and read the question to yourself. Unpause the video when you're ready to go over it together. First, it's important to know that there are three parts to this project. Also, the total points for the project is 100 points. Here we're given what Roma got on part A, as well as part C. And over here we're given what his total score was. The question we're trying to answer is how many points he got on part B. Let's write a verbal model here. Here's my verbal model. If we add up the points he earned in part A, with the points he earned in part B, with the points he earned in part C, that should equal the total points he earned on his project. Now let's turn this into a numerical expression. We know that he earned 50 out of 50 points in part A, and we're looking for the amount of points that he earned in part B. We don't know this part yet. However, we do know that in part C, he earned a total of 23 points. And finally, we know that the total score he got was 93. Let's rearrange this a bit. If we write the total points he earned, which was 93, and take away the 50 points he already earned in part A, and take away 23 points he earned in part C, this should equal the points that he earned in part B. This right here is our numerical expression. Going from left to right here, 93 minus 50 is going to be 43, so we're going to have 43 minus 23, and 43 minus 23 is just going to be 20. We can conclude that Roma got 20 points on part B on his project. Let's try number two now. Pause the video and read the question to yourself, and unpause it to give it a go. We know that the first minute of the phone call costs 99 cents. After the first minute, each minute's going to cost 10 cents. Let's start with a verbal model. The cost of the first minute plus the cost of the rest of the phone call length is equal to the total cost. The cost of the first minute is 99 cents, so we can put that right over here. And now we have to add on the cost of the rest of the phone call. Each minute of the rest of the phone call is costing 10 cents. Since the entire phone call length is 17 minutes, we have to take 17 and subtract one because we already paid for the first minute. This will get us our total cost. Without units here, we can say 0.99 plus 0.1 times 17 minus 1. Following the order of operations, we're going to start with 17 minus 1, and that's going to be 16. Here we'll write 0.99, or 99 cents, plus 0.1, or 10 cents, times 16. Hopefully it makes sense that we're multiplying by 16, because the 16 minutes after the first minute cost 10 cents each. Next, we're going to multiply 0.1 by 16, because it costs 10 cents for each of the 16 minutes, and that's going to cost $1.60. Here we can write 0.99 plus 1.6. Adding 99 cents to $1.60, we're going to get $2.59. We can say the total cost of this phone call is going to be $2.59. Let's try example three. Pause the video to read the question, then unpause when you're ready to start. I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle since that's the shape of the patio. We're told the length is 14 meters, so I'll write L is equal to 14 meters. Then we're told that the width is seven more than half of the length. Since we know that the length is 14, half of 14, we can write as 14 over two, and it's gonna be seven more than that, so we're gonna add on seven. This is how long the width is gonna be in meters. Here I've labeled them on the rectangle. To find the perimeter of a rectangle, you can add all four sides up, or you can say it's twice the length plus twice the width. Substituting in, we can say two times 14 plus two times 14 over two plus seven. This is our numerical expression, and solving this will get us our perimeter. Following the order of operations, we're going to look inside the parentheses, and inside the parentheses, we're going to start with division. 14 divided by 2 is 7, so we're going to write 2 times 14 plus 2 times the quantity of 7 plus 7. Since we still have an operation inside the parentheses, we need to add 7 and 7 here. That's going to get us 14, so we're going to write 2 times 14 plus 2 times 14. Well, we have two multiplication problems, we'll do the one on the left first. 2 times 14 is going to be 28, so we'll have 28 plus 2 times 14. 
Then solving the second multiplication problem, 2 times 14 is also 28, so we can write 28 plus 28. 28 plus 28 is 56, and that's our final perimeter. The perimeter of the patio is 56 meters long. It turns out the patio is actually a square. This still makes sense though because all squares are rectangles. Now let's try example 4. Give the video a pause to read the question, and unpause when you're ready to go over it. The total cost of the new horse was $4,000. We see here that she already paid for $500 of it. She also got a $200 discount for being a student, and her grandparents gave her two-thirds of the remaining balance as a birthday gift. I'm going to start by writing a verbal model. The total cost of the horse is equal to the down payment plus the remaining cost plus any discounts. The total cost of the horse is $4,000, and that includes a down payment of $500 plus the unknown remaining costs plus the discount of $200. If the total cost is $4,000 and she already paid for $500, we can subtract that from her remaining costs. We can also subtract the $200 she got as a student discount since she doesn't have to pay for that. This will equal the remaining balance. Since her grandparents are going to pay for two-thirds of the remaining cost, Eileen still has to pay for one-third of it. Therefore, we can write one-third times 4,000 minus 500 minus 200. This is the numerical expression that we'll solve to find out how much Eileen still has to pay. Based on the order of operations, we'll look inside the parentheses first. And with two subtraction problems, we'll start on the left. 4,000 minus 500 is 3,500, so we'll write 1 third times the quantity of 3,500 minus 200. 3,500 minus 200 is 3,300, so we can write 1 third times 3,300. Taking one third of 3,300 or multiplying them, we're gonna get 1,100. Eileen still owes $1,100. After the down payment and discount, the remaining cost was $3,300. Her grandparents paid two thirds of it, which was $2,200, which left $1,100 left for Eileen to pay. In example five, we're gonna translate verbal expressions into numerical expressions. These are all example of verbal expressions or verbal sentences. Let's convert these into actual numerical expressions that can be solved. Let's look at this one first. It says find 17 less than the product of 8 and 14. If you're going to have to find 17 less than something, then we're going to have to subtract 17. But what are we subtracting 17 from? It's going to be 17 less than the product of 8 and 14. Since product means multiplication, we can write 8 times 14. Our numerical expression is going to be 8 times 14 minus 17. You can evaluate these expressions if you'd like, but I'm just going to focus on translating in this example. Let's try another one here. We have to find the difference of the product of 5 and 8 and 5 squared. This word difference means that we're going to be subtracting something. But what are we going to be subtracting? It looks like the first part is going to be the product of 5 and 8, which is just going to be 5 times 8. And the second part is going to be 5 squared, which looks like this. Since we need to find the difference of these two pieces, we're going to write 5 times 8 minus 5 squared. Let's try this third one here. We have to find the difference of the product of 4 and 8 and the quotient of 45 and 9. Difference means subtraction, so we're going to be subtracting two parts. Part 1 is going to be the product of 4 and 8, which is just 4 times 8. And part 2 is going to be the quotient of 45 and 9. Quotient means division, so that's going to be 45 divided by 9. You could also write it as a fraction of 45 over 9. So again, we have to find the difference of these two pieces. We're going to write 4 times 8 minus 45 over 9. This represents the difference of the product of 4 and 8 and the quotient of 45 and 9. And here's the last one. We're going to find 2 thirds of the difference of 18 and the square of 3. First, we're going to find 2 thirds of something, and that's just going to be a fraction of 2 thirds. Since we're taking two-thirds of something, we're going to be multiplying two-thirds by something else. Remember that of means multiplication. We have to find the difference of 18 and the square of 3. Difference means subtraction, and the square of 3 is 3 squared. Remember that when we see difference, we have to subtract two things. Since we have the difference of 18 and the square of 3, we're going to take 18 and subtract 3 squared. We're going to have two-thirds times the quantity of 18 minus 3 squared. And that's our numerical expression. And that wraps up this video on applications of numerical expressions. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and let me know in the comment section below. 
keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.